to everything there is a season and everything must come to an end and this video is about an ending hi i'm creative katie karen virtual welcome to my channel what's coming to an end well it's my art journal i have all these pages i have about two or three left to go so it's time to paint and design the cover this is the artist loft brand mixed media journal it measures eight and a half by 11. I bought it because the Kansa Mixed Media wasn't available. I was going to give it a coat of white gesso like I have with every other cover, but I thought, you know what? It's already black, so let's go with black. All I have to do is cover up basically the Artist Loft logo on the front, and I'm giving it a coat of black gesso here to start off. Now, I'm going to be honest here. My plan was to do the stained glass, reverse the stencil technique with bold and bright colors on this black background. And then I saw this gel print, this lovely gel print that I just, I think it was a clean off print, but it just was spectacular, the bright colors. And I thought, you know what, what if I just glued that on and use this as an insta background i'm gluing it down with a good amount of gel medium i want to make sure this really sticks there's a little bit of texture on that um cover and i make using a brayer to press down checking making sure that everything is completely dry then i'm taking inspiration from the beautiful bright bold colors and I instantly think of something that I know I have in my focal image stash. And these are these fronds that I stenciled and the colors there. So I'm putting them on there and I'm liking how they really pop and go well with that background. So decision made, I grab these stencils. Now these are stencils that I made with my silhouette. I had the fronds. I use them and it's something you can make yourself or there's lots of different stencil companies that have similar fronds. The colors that I'm going to use, I'm taking from the background. The golds, the yellows, there's blue there, there's the teal, there's kind of the mixed colors. So I have bright orange, cadmium yellow, yellow oxide, Naples yellow, um, deep violet, Prussian blue, and I believe Bright Aqua. Those are all the colors that I've used. Now I'm just using scrap papers, little bits in here, anything that'll fit. And I'm going to mix the paint wet on wet on the makeup sponge and stencil on the paper. What I'm doing here is just having a stash builder. I know that I'm going to be making more of these than what I'm going to use on the page, but I want variety. I want some that are a little more purple, or some that are a little more orange, yellow. I'm melding the colors together, and then I'm stamping with a script stamp. Here I'm using archival ink. Later I stamp with acrylic paint, and it gives a slightly different effect. As you can see with that stencil, I've cut out two different sizes. What you also want to do is flip the stencil over so you get the fronds going in different directions. And I, I didn't do that enough during this stash builder, but I have all the paints out. So why not make more than you need? Because botanicals, using these fronds, this is something that has worked well on lots of pages. And it's a good thing to have in the stash. Now, once they're dry, I'm just cutting it out and I'm giving it a little bit of a white halo border. You could not do that if you prefer. And I'm not going to make you watch me cut out all of them. So in this stash builder, you're going to see me use different color combinations just to give you ideas of some of the different looks. Here I'm using the yellow oxide first and then building colors. 
Now at the end, once these, oh, here I'm adding some bright aqua and Prussian blue. Again, the colors that I'm using are dictated by that gel print, that Insta background. I want to pull out those colors. And I'm not sure what's going to look best in my final composition. So I just want to make a variety of them so I have options. You could also do these fronds and do these on cards and then you have a variety. Do different backgrounds, different colored fronds. That would be perfectly lovely. Throw on a sentiment and away you go. Here is bright aqua, the little Prussian blue, and I stamped with blue archival ink in this case. Here I'm going more purple, more deep violet. Just fitting it in. If only the space that you have isn't doesn't quite fit. Here I'm going more Prussian blue, dark blue at the end, which I absolutely and I end up using one of these because I loved it. And then a little bit of the deep, not deep violet, a little bit of the bright aqua on there. So then I after I cut out some of them, I'm kind of playing with it and seeing what do I like? Do I need more of the dark navy? Is that what's working? what's working. So I'm constantly going back to my background, testing it, and that's kind of directing the colors that I'm choosing moving forward in this stash builder session. Doing this cover was very quick if you take out the stash builder, but that's all part of it. And I'm excited to know that I have extras that are going to be in my stash that I can use to make cards or to um, put on another art journal page at another time. So the goal is to make everyone different. So here, instead of using the archival ink, I am brayering on the yellow oxide onto that same script stamp. I'm putting the stencil back on, and then that script is going exactly where the color is. Any small scale stamp here would work, but it needs to be fairly small because you want to see it. Do I need to know that it's script stamp? No, it's just mark making. love, love, loving the look of this and the possibilities. In fact, I love these fronds so much that I'm going to look for or draw different fronds, different shape leaves to build up my repertoire of them. It's a good uh, neutral addition to most journal page. Here I'm using Naples Yellow, giving that a base coat, adding a little bit of orange, a little bit of deep violet, as I said, I'm, I've got all those colors on the palette and I'm just adding them. However, goal being to keep everyone the same. If you get something you don't like, coat of gesso, let it dry, start from scratch. Here I'm stamping with the Prussian blue. Loving that. Then I play on the background and I do a couple different orientations and different kind of setups, combos, different color fronds. And I'm comfortable knowing that I have a good idea, a good variety of colors. But then think of the idea of what if I stenciled on book paper or music paper? So I wanted to give that a try before I packed away everything and proceeded with the page. So here you're using the text of the book paper or music paper that you have, and that's giving that fine detail. So it's an option that you have and it's going to give a slightly different effect. So at this point, I had a medical appointment. So I packed up all the fronds and their papers, grabbed a pair of scissors, and as my husband drove me to my medical appointment, I cut out all these fronds. Now, once they're cut out, they're a little harder to take care of. They get kind of bent. You could leave them on the full sheet in your sash, your preference. So I did play a little bit with 
the fronds with the colors. I like having, you know, the yellow shows up on the teal part and the dark navy part or the Prussian blue looks good where on the lower part that is lighter. I want to pull out all the colors that were in that beautiful gel print background, grungy gel print background. So once I have a good idea of where it is, you want to remove what is on top and start with what is the furthest behind. And that's this yellow front. Now I'm leaving the orange one there and just tacking this down the top part so it doesn't move. I want the positioning to stay how I've played with it and how I've gotten it. So go slow and glue things down little by little. So here, once that's done, I'm going to flip and finish glue or start to glue down, stabilize this orange frond here. And I'm using, I believe I'm using fluid matte medium here, but gel medium works too, but they're both the matte finish and that's what's important. So I'm reaching behind, tacking this down. Now that that one's tacked down, now I need to go back to this one. So you can see how I'm kind of playing with both, tacking down it as I go, instead of tacking the whole thing down or gluing the whole thing down. I did extend the stem here and I'm just painting it the yellow of the background so it just disappears. So you don't even notice that it's there. So just finalizing the step here. Do I need another? I love the navy one, but do I need another one? Oh, that's too much. It looks better with just one. You know, the size, the shape, the, the turn of the element. So this is why you wanted to spend time with the stash builder and get a lot of variety so that you have options at this stage of the page. Do I want this? And I'm auditioning. I'm trying the different ones. Okay, if I have this, what does it look like? What does it look like? Do I like this? Do I want it further up? How? And there's a lot of tweaking. Okay, I'm happy with this one. So this is the furthest down. I need to tack it down first. And then I want this navy one, this Prussian blue one to be over top of this, of the one on the left, and underneath the one on the right. So I've got some reds, some yellows, some, there's a little bit of the teal in there, there's a little bit of the blue, orange. I've got all the colors represented. And they are so bright and so vibrant. And I'm overlapping. Do you see how I'm going where the black is? I'm going off the gel print. And I really like that effect as well. Making sure everything's glued down. And then I'm thinking, do I need something over here? And I thought, yes. Again, there is no right or wrong. There's just what looks good to you. Go with it. Trust your instincts. So now I'm grabbing my angle brush and some black acrylic paint and I am shading around the leaves, the fronds. And I'm doing all of them. I don't show this all on camera because it takes a long time and it's very repetitive. I will link the video where I teach this shading technique in case you are looking for a good shading thing. Once that's done, I'm shade around or edge the gel print. This just kind of softens the edge, makes it meld more into the page. And then I proceed and do lots more shading off camera. This just adds definition and it further makes this, makes the fronds stand out from the background. Once all the shading is done, I grab my fine line applicator bottle. This one has gold in it, and I'm using the gold on the frond that's in the center, the one that's mostly Prussian blue, and I'm giving it a shiny outline. 
I love the fine line applicators. I'm tempted to buy, there's another shape with it that's more um, like a column or a tube, different shape. And I'm wondering if that's easier to work with. Anybody knows? Let me know in the comment section below. Now, the rest of them, I decided not to use gold. I am outlining with black. So I go around each of the fronds carefully with the black acrylic paint. Now, this is just acrylic paint, Liquitex Basics, that I have thinned and put in the tubes. And I'm being careful not to get my hand in any of the wet paint. You're going to want to give this some time to dry. It's a little bit dimensional, and it does take time to dry. And then I'm putting a sketchy line around the gel print as well. A good splatter of thinned gold paint, just to add a little bit of bling. I debated about putting a sentiment, chose not to, which is extremely rare for me. I cannot tell you how much I love this background. This is something that I will do, I could do on a canvas or a wood panel to be turn into a home decor item. I love the colors so, so, so much. I love how this all came together. Every piece will be a little different depending on the frond. Thank you so much for subscribing to my channel if you're a subscriber. Thank you for watching. If you like what you see, give me a thumbs up, leave a comment, let YouTube know you appreciate uh, the video content that I put out. So that will help me grow my channel. Again, thanks so much for watching. Until next time, go get creative. Oh, flip through of this journal coming up soon.